All right, so now we're gonna do multiplication. We're gonna do single digit multiplication and multi-digit, meaning more than one digit multiplication. Remember that multiplication is repeated addition. So it means the number, whichever one you choose, added the amount of times as the other number. That is confusing right now, but I'll show you in just a moment. So remember that multiplication is repeated addition. So at first, it seems a little bit intimidating, and I get that, I understand, but you know how to add. You've been adding for forever. You can totally, totally do multiplication as well. Let's do some practice. Before we jump into doing actual multiplication, let's take a moment to look at multiples and factors. These are things that are components of multiplication that are oftentimes confused, and so let's get those straight before we get into actually practicing multiplication. So if you look at this image here, you see that factors and multiples, they have similarities. So a factor is a number that is multiplied by another number to get a product. So for example, a factor of 20 in this case would be 5 and 4. But we know multiplication facts and we know that there are other factors of 20 as well. 1 times 20, 1 times the number is always a factor. And remember that if the number only has one and itself, then that is prime. If a number has any other factors than that, that number is called a composite. So 20, the factors of 20 are 1 and 20, 2 and 10, 4 and 5. Now, those are the factors, but if you look at them as factor pairs, then that would be like 1 comma 20, 2 comma 10, but the factors are listed individually. It is best practice to do those starting from one. So the best way that I would recommend is to say what times blank is this number, two times blank is this number, three times blank is this number, and not every number will apply, obviously, um, but that way you make sure that you don't skip any. And once you get to 10, you, you can stop. So a multiple is if you skip counted by that number, you would get to 20. So that's where they're similar in the fact that if you count by ones, you'll get to 20. So therefore, one is a multiple. If you count by twos, you'll get to 20. Therefore, two is a multiple. If you count by threes, you will not get to 20. So three is not a multiple. That's how they are similar. All right, let's give this another look. So again, multiples are the number by which you can skip count. So for example, they use 12 here. So if we're doing multiples of 12, then you skip count by 12. You skip count by 12 twice and you get to 24. You skip count by 12 three times, you get to 36. You skip count by 12 four times, you get to 48. That sort of thing. So that means that 24 is a multiple of 12, or 12 is a multiple of 24, 12 is a multiple of 36, and 12 is a multiple of 48. Now factors are the numbers that can be multiplied together to get that main number, to get that product. So back to 12, 1 times 12 is 12, 2 times 6 is 12, 3 times 4 is 12. Notice how they went in order. So if you were to list those uh, factors there, you would have 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 12. If you do them in factors, then you have 1 and 12, 2 and 6, 3 and 4. Okay. One last visual before we get into actual multiple um, examples and then we'll get into multiplication examples are prime and composite. So again remember that prime, a number is prime when only one and itself are the factors. A number is composite when it has any other numbers. 9 and 15 are the most commonly misconstrued numbers of prime. They are not prime because 9 has factor pairs 1 and 9 3 and 3. Therefore, by definition, it's not prime. 15 is 1 and 15, 3 and 5. So again, more than two factor, more than one factor pair, 
more than two factors itself, not um, prime. Some people think, oh, all odd numbers are prime. That's not true. So it is good to remember that a prime number is a number that only has one n itself as factors. A composite number is any number that has more than two factors, more than one factor pair. All right, let's look at a couple examples of prime and composite numbers. So I have went ahead and put a C if it was composite and P for prime, okay? So I, as an example, started with 36. Now, what I mean by saying starting by 1 and then you can end at 10 is asking yourself every single digit, 1 times blank is 36, 2 times blank is 36, 3 times blank is 36, 4 times blank, 5 times blank, 6 times blank, blah, blah, blah. Not all of them will apply, but that way you make sure that you didn't miss anything. So, for example, 36, 1 times 36, 2 times 18, 3 times 12, 4 times 9, and 6 times 6. Those are the factor pairs of 36. So the factors itself, if I were listing them in order as I should, is 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 9, 12, 18, 36. Okay, you, write, you list them in ascending order. So, or excuse me, in D, no, yes, ascending order, <laughs> smallest to largest. 17. 17 is a prime because there is only one and the number itself. So therefore it's 17. Let's do a couple more. Uh, here we have 24 and the factor pairs of 24. 1 times blank is 24. 24. 2 times 12. 3 times 8. 4 times 6. So you see how I went through. 5 doesn't apply. 6 does apply, but it's already here. You don't need to do it again. 7 does not apply, 8 does apply, but it's already listed. 9 does not apply, 10 does not apply, and then you can stop. So on the one side, if you go all the way to 10, you will catch all of your factors. So the factor pairs are 1 and 24, 2 and 12, 3 and 8, 4 and 6. If I were to list them as factors only, because remember a pair is like two things, right? So if I were to list them only as factors, I would have 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 12, 24. And this is a composite number. 11 is a prime number because only 1 and 11, they're the only factors. And if a number only has one factor pair or two factors, it is prime. Here's 100. So remember that 2 is a factor of every single even number. It's a trick. So if you're going through an even number and you don't have 2, you know that unfortunately you went wrong in your math somewhere. So make sure that every single even number has 2 as a factor. The factor pairs of 100 are 1 and 100, 2 and 50, 4 and 25, 5 and 20, 10 and 10. I went all the way to 10, right? If I were to list them as factors only, it would be 1, 2, 4, 5, 10, 20, 25, 50, 100. Therefore, it is a composite. 15 is one of those tricky ones that people often think is a prime number because it is odd, but it is not because it has more than two factors. It has more than two factor pairs, right? See here, 11 and 17, they only have two factors. 15 has more than that. 15 has 1 and 15, 3 and 5. Therefore, it is a composite. All right, so I gave us a practice problem of 5 times 7. Now, you can do single digit multiplication most likely because this is, again, a memorization and we know a trick by fives, right? You can't buy five seven times. But for the sake of this, let's break down how to do actual math. It is good practice to always put the largest number on the top. This would definitely make a difference later on when we do division. So I put the largest number, which is 7, over 5. That does not change your answer at all. If it does, then some math went wrong somewhere because it should not. So 7 times 5. Now this one, I just used my math facts and I knew that it was 35. But 
If we're going to the repeated addition way, I have seven and I added it five times. Now I'm gonna do some little cheats. I know that seven plus seven is 14, seven plus seven is 14, and then I just brought that seven down because there's nothing left to do with it. 14 plus 14 is 28, plus seven is 35. So again, multiplication is simply repeated addition. Let's do some multi-digit because single digit I'm certain that you have a good handle on. All right, now my second problem here is 23 by 46. Again, I put the largest number above the smallest number because that is best practice. It's just if you get into that habit now, you won't have to change a habit later on when you're doing division. So just stick with that. Largest number on top, smaller number on the bottom. Then you go through and you start on the bottom from the smallest number, you start all the way to the right and you have to kind of cross multiply until there is nothing left. So I'm gonna show you two different ways. I am going to tend to revert to this way, but I will uh, try my best to remember to show it this way to you as well, the kind of place value way in the event that this way is the way that makes more sense. When you are doing quick multiplication, uh, doing it the cross multiplication way tends to be the one that is the quickest. So we start on the bottom all the way to the right and here we have a three in the ones place, right? And then I cross multiply. So I go up and over. Three times six is 18. So I put my eight in the ones place. I have to carry my one into the tens place. Three times four is 12, but I have a one up there, which I've actually crossed out for the other step, I'll tell you in just a moment. So now I have 13. So three times 46 is 138. Then I'm now moving to the tens place. And because I'm moving to the tens place, it is a math rule that you drop a zero. Why? You just do, okay? You're gonna do that for every time that there is more than one digit, which we will get to, or more than two digits, excuse me. So zero in the ones place because now we're dealing with the tens. Two times six is 12, so I put my two in the tens place, carry my one. I crossed out the one from the previous step because if you don't, more than likely you will forget which one goes with what and you might add it twice and that will obviously change your answer. So it's best to just cross it out when you're done with it, those, those carry digit up there. So again, two times six is 12, but now I'm dealing with the two in the tens place. So I put my two from the 12 in the tens place. I carry my one, two times four is eight, plus one is nine. And then there are no digits left for me to multiply. So I strictly just add them together. Eight plus zero is eight, three plus two is five, nine plus one is 10, ta-da. Now notice here that I didn't carry that. I just wrote the 10 out because there is no digit to carry that additional one with. You know, for example, if I were to put the zero and carry the one, there's nothing else there. So you simply just write the number out in full. Now, the secondary way that you can multiply, it, there's no right or wrong, so it's not like if you do this way, you're right, if you do this way, you're right, wrong or wrong. No, it's just the way that makes sense to you. Do, do what makes sense to you. Like I said, I will gravitate toward cross multiplication because it tends to be the quickest, but do what makes sense to you, okay? And eventually you, you might try one way and like it for a while and then move to another and that's totally fine as well. So now what you do here is you simply break it into place value every single time. So I have two times three because, or excuse me, I'm, I'm so sorry. I have six times three because I have the ones place multiplied together, okay? Six times three is 18. Then I have three times 40 because I've already dealt with that six, so I now take the six away from 46 and I'm left with 40. So three times 40 is 120. Now I'm dealing with the, the tens place, so I have 20 times 40, or excuse me, 20 times six, I skipped a part right now, so 20, because I've already done something with that three, so now I just make it a zero. 20 times six is also 120. Now I have 20 times 40, which is 800, and then I add them together and I get the same answer. You should 
get the same answer regardless of which method you use. If the method changes your answer, then that means that some math went wrong. The method should not matter because we know our multiplication facts. Now, if you somehow have the time, which I don't recommend, as I said, multiplication is repeated addition. So you could add uh, 46 23 times or 23 46 times, but that would take an inordinate, meaning like a lot, amount of time. I don't recommend that. Don't do that. <laughs> so while definition wise, that is what this means, we've got to refine our skills and we've got to learn either cross multiplication or place value multiplication. Let's try one. All right, so my next problem is 78 times 103. Again, good practice. Put my largest number up on the top, my smaller number beneath that. Then for cross multiplication, because we'll just ignore this one for right now, for the cross multiplication way, we are going to start on the lowest number in the ones place. So now I multiply eight times three, which is 24, put my four here, put my two uh, right up here in the tens place. Eight times zero is zero, but I need to add that two, which is two. Four times, oh, sorry, eight times one is eight. There you go. Now, because I'm now moving to the tens place, math rule says I drop a zero. So I dropped a zero. Seven times three is 21. I put the one in the tens place because I already have a zero in the ones place. So my one carried my two. This is why it's important to cross out the previous uh, carried numbers so you don't get confused. Carried my two. Now I have seven times zero, which is zero, but I have a two. That moves into the hundreds place. Seven times one is seven. Then I just go through and I straight add. Four plus zero is four. Two plus one is three. Eight plus two is 10. I have a zero. Carry the one. Seven plus one is eight. Ta-da, my answer, 8,034. If I do it the place value way, I have eight times three, which is 24, because that's the ones place. Eight is in the ones, three is in the ones. Eight times uh, nothing in the tens place. So eight times zero is zero. Now I'm doing eight times 100, because I'm dealing with the digit in the hundreds place. So eight times 100. Now I'm finished with the eight, so I go on to the seven, but the seven is not a seven, it looks like a seven, it's actually 70, because I've already done something with the eight in the ones place. So 70 times three is 210, 70 times nothing in the tens place is zero, anything times zero is zero. And lastly, 70 times 100 is 7,000. We know a little trick here, right? That all we do is we add the number of zeros. So I have seven times one, which is seven. And then I have one, two, three zeros, ta-da, 7,000. Added them all together, I get 8,034. Now we do realize that you may be thinking, why am I doing this? I have a calculator, I have a phone, it's with me all the time because it's good to use your brain and it's good to know these facts. Because sometimes when you're out or at the store and you might wanna know, gosh, how do I, you know, if each of these apples is 36 cents and I want three of them, how many do I need? You can just pop it off real quick in your head. You don't always have to use technology. And what if your phone is dead or something like that or got lost or taken away, something like that, or you're in class and you can't use it. So it's good to know multiplication facts. Uh, it just really is. It's worth your time, I promise. That's it. That's our multiplication. So again, go ahead and do those practice problems. Please read the feedback of those practice problems in the event that you get it wrong. If you don't, then awesome, you've got this. But if you do, it will give you step-by-step-by-step -by -step -by -step instructions on how to do the problem and maybe where um, some math went wrong because sometimes if you're one digit off, it will totally change your answer and it could be something just as simple as that. So take your time, uh, use either method, whatever's best for you, and ask me questions because I'm here and I want to be here and I want to help you and that's the whole point. So let me know if you have any questions. Try your best. Take your time. You've got this.